you know the correct way to hold an airbrush for a huge increase in airbrush control? It's time to rethink what you've been taught about holding an airbrush like a pencil. Now I myself taught this on YouTube. I taught people to hold it with a pencil grip with your index finger just gently over the top of the trigger. Now great, you do have a good extent of airbrush control here. It is a comfortable grip, but there is a better way. Do you know how to create a plan of attack for airbrushing an artwork? It's easy. Because it's a sharp edge, we know that we need to be very close with our airbrush. It's darker here than what it is on this side, so we should always be angling in towards this darkest area. Do you know the four elements of airbrush control? One of the most effective ways to learn any subject matter is to atomize it. That's to break it down into a smallest, most minute parts. Exactly like your airbrush does with the paint that's inside it. <laughs> Little joke. Your final result is a combination of lots of small, tiny things done precisely to deliver you perfection. So how do we go about breaking down airbrushing as a subject? Well, let's atomize the elements of airbrush control. Whenever you create an effect in airbrushing, you have full control over the following. Height, angle, trigger intensity, or the opacity that the paint is on the paper, and your movement. Four elements of airbrush control. Remember them. Ever wondered how to look at a reference and know for sure that you're airbrushing it correctly on your canvas. Okay, so now that we have a rough understanding of what shapes are, why don't we try to mentally magnify a piece of this reference image and try to identify the individual shapes within that small part of the image, just as we would do for any artwork that we're going to airbrush. Okay, now I've used technology to aid us here. I've managed to zoom in on a section of the eye around here and blow it up, thank you to a high pixel count. <laughs> Want to create incredible lifelike portraits that you can even possibly sell and go on to make money from? Or to create personal gifts, birthday presents, anniversary gifts? This DVD course is primarily focused on the foundations of airbrush control. So enough of all this talk and shenanigans. It's finally time for us to get started and do some actual airbrushing, what we all came here for. Okay, but you're going to need to have a couple of things set up in order to begin doing this. We're going to quickly run through the setup in the compressor, put, airbrush, uh, put some paint into our airbrush, and we'll put one of these exercise sheets on the board here as well. So to give a quick recap, we have six airbrush effects that we can create. We have a dot which is very straightforward, but we add movement to that dot, which gives us a line. If we then create multiple passes of that same line, we're going to create a blend. You then have the dagger stroke, the reverse dagger stroke, and a combination of the blend and the reverse dagger stroke to deliver you a transition. Transition, transition. <laughs> I'm an idiot. The first half of this DVD course is all about the correct habits to get used to when holding an airbrush, double actioning, and executing one of your airbrush effects. Any artist can benefit from this course in airbrush control. This means that no matter your desired application, whether you're a body painter, a cake decorator, you want to do temporary tattoos at fun fairs, illustration airbrush work, or you're an automotive vehicle refinisher and you want to start painting on cars and motorbikes, anyone with an airbrush in their hand is going to find benefit in this course. By the end of this DVD, you're going to have the knowledge to be able to start self-teaching yourself at home. It gives you the ability to be able to identify and correct the mistakes that you make in any artwork, meaning that you are going to be the one that helps you improve. Just test our airbrush on 
one of the darkest parts of the image. Make sure we're happy with how it's working. Yeah, it's working nicely. So we know we can start. Move a freehand. Darken things up. Now the reason I do only the darkest parts first is because it allows us a little bit of a cheat. This is where our fiberglass pencil becomes our best friend. If you've made any mistakes, or if you feel that your effects are too dark, then as long as you haven't added in too many mid-tones and definitely no subtle shapes, then you can go in and correct it by simply erasing it with your fiberglass pencil. Now I'm trying to create this dark effect that extends from the eyebrow down the side of the nose. So let's go for it. Now we have a dotted line and a broken line to guide us. So I'm going to begin the effect within the dotted line. And I'm raising my height here as the effect extends. You can see how slowly I'm building that up. Once again, I'll get in closer create the edge of the eye there. Bit of a transition and a blend. Get that eyelid. Let's use a bit of a reverse dagger stroke at a very acute angle to pick up the top. Let's join these effects a little. Quite a sharp line here. Use my fingers as a guide to create this. Again, I'll just do this series of dots, just sort of move in a line here as well. Create that rough edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once I've put it in with my hand, just go over a few times with the airbrush, why not? Now look, if your artwork is looking something like the contrast queen of Orange County or something like that, then good chance you're doing things in the correct order. Okay, because we've only added in the tonal buffer zones, which are all the darkest areas of the artwork, and we haven't added in much tone, we're going to have black and white areas. So she's just full of contrast. In order for us to bring that contrast down, we need to come over the top with our mid-tones. Now the mid-tones in general are the areas that extend out from these tonal buffer zones that we've just created. And then again, if it's just difficult to see where things are, do your darkest areas first. Again, you can just do our fiberglass trick here if you want. Move your finger forward if you're finding you need more trigger control. It's a little bit darker here, and I'm just going to aim up into that dark area and create this edge along here. Try to get them as sharp as you can. and encourage a bit of a blend, starting halfway on this tonal buffer zone edge and halfway off. See it blending slowly and her cheeks just getting rounder and rounder. I have a look and there's actually not that much of a blend. So instead I'll raise my height a bit more. I'll come in front this way a little and just try to nail that in one line. I have a look, it's looking good. It's just a bit of irregularity here. So just a couple of dots and lines on the side of the tonal buffer zone. Just encourage it to blend out a little, a bit weird. It extends down, doesn't it? And we have an effect coming up this way as well. This way on the mouth. Now again, large height. I'm just gonna do a reverse dagger, straight up the side there. Just lightly going over those really dark areas. I'm just barely touching them, to be honest. I can see that it's creating some super fine textures there, and that's exactly what I want. Just constantly referring to my reference. Like I said, I've got my reference in one hand. Just looking for the brightest areas in the hair. You need to put a hair along that shadow just to, so that it makes sense. A perfect example is this lock of hair here that curls under here and to the left. 
I can see that there's quite a large highlighted area just here, a very obvious area, and it fades up. So we're not going to do 100% strength uh, scratch lines going up. We're not going to do that. Instead, we'll create this lighter area exactly how we see it, and then we'll gradually lighten it our intensity with the fiberglass pen, and we'll just encourage little textures to blend out of that, okay? That's exactly how you blend with the fiberglass pen is you just don't press as hard. Easy. Well, look where we are. We've come so far in this short space of time. <laughs> now, when you're up to this level in the artwork, it's often difficult to wonder, when do I stop? Am I going to ruin it? What do I do? All I typically do is because I've gone over every effect and I've done them to the best of my ability, I'm pretty sure that the entire artwork is done. Okay, however, all I'll do is I'll take a look at the reference, I'll take a big step back, and I'll try to see, do I need to darken any areas, like large areas, I mean, do I need to add any tone? I took a step back just a moment ago and I had a look and I really think that I can add just a tiny bit more darkness to this face. And by a tiny bit, like 5%. So find an image that you like and challenge yourself. Like I said, if it's not turning out, just focus on some smaller sections. Just do an eye, just focus on the nose, the mouth. Put all those sections together and I bet you will have amazed yourself at what you've just created. Start small, but think big. If you want to learn to airbrush and you want to learn the correct way to achieve excellent, accurate results and master your airbrush control, then this DVD is for you. Just another way to continue spreading the love 